it's another book haul. This time I come to you specifically with a second hand book haul. So most of the books in the pile behind me I picked up second hand in charity bookshops with the addition of a few that my friend Jill passed on to me when she was having a massive book clear out. And then there's three from Jill and the rest are all from charity bookshops. So I actually managed to acquire all these books for very little money, I think less than £20 for everything in this pile and there's some really good books in there so I thought I would just bundle them all together and do a specific second hand book haul for you. But without further ado, let's get into the books shall we? So on the top of my pile I have probably the most beat up of all the books I picked up, it's pretty broken spine and has a tear in the front. But I just thought it sounded really interesting and it's Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier and it says a sweeping Celtic romance in the tradition of the mists of Avalon. I've wanted to pick up the mists of Avalon for ages and just haven't gotten round to it. It's always quite expensive new so I thought well this maybe just as good? I don't know. I, th I think this author has written a lot of books from googling her, um, a lot of fantasy books and I'm really enjoying getting more into fantasy recently and I really love these kind of very traditional fantasy covers or at least that's what I think when I look at them. They're a little bit cheesy um, but I do, I do love them and this one is loosely inspired by the sort of fairy tale of the seven swans um, and in this it's about our main character and they live in Ireland in a sort of medieval-esque time and um, her father has remarried a evil sorceress who has turned her six brothers into swans, at least that's what it says on the back. I've only read the first 14 pages and that hasn't happened yet. It's quite a chunky little book, it's um, over 500 pages so a lot to get your teeth into. But I'd love to know if you've read anything by this author, do you like her work, do you recommend any of her other books? She sounds really good, I really like the sound of this. Um, a sort of questy fantasy book, so looking forward to it. On that note, I was just perusing the science fiction fantasy section of these charity bookshops and came across another book that just screamed to me with that cover. It's just such a cheesy, stereotypical fantasy mass market paperback that I wanted it and it did sound quite good. It's called The Meeting of the Waters by Cassiel Moore. I mean, this is again as the book one in a series, and I oh, don't even know really what this one's about. That's the thing when they're 150, you don't mind so much if you don't know. Brave, copper haired Aifa was the daughter of a king, a bold young woman full of life and mischief, but on one winter's night, she and her brothers took part in an act of careless mischief with consequences they could never have imagined, and a deadly blood price must be paid. Great, and it's got druids and magic and I love the cover. I know it's not really about Greek mythology but it has a very Greek myth <laughs> cover to me so I'm, I'm gonna give this one a shot too. Next up is a Shakespeare play and this is in fantastic condition plus in my favourite editions of these works. I have two of Shakespeare's other plays in these editions and I just love them but I think they're out of print. It's The Winter's Tale by William Shakespeare and I don't know if I've uploaded the video yet or not but in my confessions, reader guilty confessions video I talked about having read this in secondary school but having skipped the second act. I read the first act and the third act but not the second act for some reason unbeknownst to me many years later. So when I saw this I thought this is the time. I'm gonna reread this play in full so I can say I've actually read it and um, you know formulate a proper opinion of it. This one's definitely got a lot of classical influences in it. There's a character called Hermione, there is children being left um, out to die but being saved and raised by shepherds, shepherds which are uh, and then recognition scenes which are all very very classical literature so I'm hoping I'll maybe have a new appreciation of this one now that I'm an adult. I then have a book that I saw on the shelves and thought Yes, I need that. And it's The Past by Tessa Hadley. I already knew about this book from Simon of Savage Reads and I also think I've seen it on Lauren from Lauren in the Books channel. And Simon at least really loves this book. I think he compared it to Daphne du Maurier, which is probably why Lauren read it. <laughs> and it's been in the back of my mind to check out since seeing Simon talk about it. So when I saw it for like two pounds on the bookshelf, I had to have it, especially since it's in pretty darn good condition. I don't know terribly much about this, I've just seen it and heard people rave about it and saw it cheap, but it says in the back, four siblings meet up in their grandparents' old house for three long hot summer weeks, but under the idyllic surface lies simmering tensions. <laughs> 
Roland has come with his new wife and his sisters don't like her. Fran has brought her children who soon uncover an ugly secret in a ruined cottage in the woods. Alice has invited Kazim, an outsider who makes plans to seduce Roland's teenage daughter. And Harriet, the eldest, finds her quiet, self her quiet self possession ripped apart when a passion erupts unexpectedly. So much going on there. It actually sounds really, really good with lots of mysteries, lots of different characters, and I'll, I'll be hopefully getting to this one soon. I then have a book that I've already read and reviewed in my mid month wrap up for September so I'll link that video if you're interested but it is a thriller novel and that is Black Eyed Susans by Julia Haberlin and this I really enjoyed. It was a very all-consuming thriller about a young woman who was um, the one remaining surviving victim of a serial killer in her teenage years and it's now almost 20 years later and the man who was convicted of these crimes is about to be executed but doubts have started to spring up in her mind that he is actually the man who kidnapped her and killed the other young girls those years ago so she's trying to get him out of prison as well as figure out who really did it and whether the person is still out there and after her. Really great thriller if you're into your thrillers. I did enjoy this one and like I said, I'll, I'll link my review. I then have three books all published by the Women's Press. I love Women's Press editions. They have these gorgeous stripy spines. Most of them are white, um, but I have two by an author here that have coloured spines. And the Women's Press were um, a press that came to be around the 1970s, I believe, um, to publish more female authors and a bid to, you know, publish more feminist literature and bring to like female authors and, you know, correct some of the biases in publishing and, you know, just recognise great women authors. I published a lot of great authors like Alice Walker, but I don't think they exist anymore, if I'm correct. So I always pick these up in the secondhand bookshops and look at what they are to see if I'm interested in the stories. My mum also has quite a few of them on her bookshelf and I saw these three and they all appealed to me. It's called Happen Thing in Travel On by Carol Spearin Macaulay and this one sounds like a female Lord of the Flies to be honest. It's about a group of women whose plane crashes in the mountains and they have to survive and it's apparently very violent and um, lots of things obviously bubble to the surface and it just sounded really compelling and it says on the back it's a bit of a thriller so I thought yeah a uh, sort of feminist Lord of the Flies thriller I'm all for that and then the next two are by the same author I have The Shape of Dread and Trophies and Dead Things by Marcia Muller, both of which are Sharon McCone mysteries. And that's why they're the coloured spines. They had quite a few in this series in the secondhand bookshop. Someone had obviously donated a pile of them, but I decided just to pick up two for the time being. Um, and each one had different coloured lines on the side. Um, these are, you know, detective mystery series. Uh, the main character is a private investigator set in America. They obviously have feminist undertones and when were they first published? They were first published in the 1980s. And my mum is a big fan of the sort of feminist detective genre, especially of the sort of 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, and she really enjoys a lot of authors that write in that genre and is always trying to get me to read them. And I, I do, I do intend to, I do intend to. Um, but I actually picked these up thinking she might like them if she hadn't read them already, which she hadn't, which was great. So she'll, I'm sure, be getting to these at some point, but I also thought I would quite like to read them. They sound really good and, um, well, there we go, we can both read them, great. One of them is about a serial killer and the other one is about a cold case. So yeah, they sound really good. Now the last two books that I picked up before I get onto the ones Jill gave me include Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. Doesn't have a dust jacket, but who cares? <laughs> it was a pound. <laughs> so I think we all know what Norse mythology is. It's Neil Gaiman's um, sort of, I don't know if they're exactly retellings or just versions of the originals um, written down by Neil Gaiman, but I am not that well versed in Norse mythology. I certainly haven't read a lot of literature on it. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really excited to get into a bit of N Norse mythology with an author who is so highly revered and whose other books I've really enjoyed. I'm sure they've done a spectacular job of bringing these um, myths to life. But yeah, pretty pretty much what it says 
on the tin, obviously the book doesn't look exactly like this if you buy it new, but it's in fantastic condition inside. So. And then a book that was in spectacular condition, and I'm so pleased to see because it's a new release, and that's The White Hair by Michael Fishwick. And I've been looking at this in the bookshop, so when I saw it for £3, almost new, it looks like someone's maybe read it, um, but it looks in great condition, in the Oxfam bookshop, I had to have it. It sounds so intriguing. I'll just read this tiny little bit here because that's what sold it to me. It says, a lost boy, a dead girl and one who is left behind. A village full of whispers and secrets. When the white hair appears, magical and fleet in the silvery moonlight, she leads them all into a legend, a chase, a hunt. But who's the hunter and who the hunted? It obviously sounds like a mystery novel with an element of perhaps magic or like something else is going on or is there magic or is there not maybe. Um, it sounds quite dark and intriguing and the cover is gorgeous. But then the three books that Jill gave me in her massive clear out managed to get rid of like 40 odd books on her shelf which I'm really proud of. Um, so I did take three and one of those is Death Comes to Pemberley by P.D. James. Now this is a sequel to Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice and I've always been vaguely intrigued by this one. It's set after Darcy and Elizabeth are now married and there is a death outside of Pemberley, their stately home, um, which may perhaps involve Wickham and Lydia and we yeah, we, we don't know what's happening, so I'm definitely intrigued to check this one out since I've um, heard so much about it. I then have a book I'd never heard of before but Jill said was good and that's The Sweet Girl by Annabelle Lyon and this is a book set in antiquity and following Aristotle. It starts with Pythias is her father's child, right down to her hard, intelligent, slight grey eyes. Aristotle has never been able to resist a keen mind in another, even in his own daughter. A young girl who should be content with the kitchen, the loom and a life dictated by the rhythms of childbearing. But this little pitho is really smart, able to best his students in debate and match wits with a room full of Athenian thinkers. Basically sounds like the story of a young female philosopher in ancient Greece, which yeah, sounds pretty good to me. And then lastly, Jill passed on to me Where Three Roads Meet by Sally Vickers and this is from the Canongate Myth series and I do not have this one. It is a retelling of the Greek myth of Oedipus but also set in the time of Freud because obviously Freud is very famous for having created, come up with, named the Oedipus Complex and I haven't managed to read this one yet so I'm really glad to have a copy of it. But those are all the books I've acquired second hand of late. Do let me know if you've read any of them or anything by any of those authors, that I, especially the ones I hadn't heard of before um, and have any thoughts on them. I'd love to hear from you and from somebody that's read them um, and also if you're just interested in any of the books. But until next time guys, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!